Hello children, in today's class we will be discussing the entire chapter of force. Dear children, in this chapter we have three units. In unit A mainly we will be discussing about turning effect of a force that is torque we will discuss, then we discuss about couple, then we discuss about equilibrium, types of equilibrium, then we discuss about principle of movements. Children, the numericals based on principle of movements are very very important. Then in unit B, it is all about center of gravity, such a simple concept it is. In a unit C, we will be discussing about uniform circular motion and a centripetal force, then we discuss about centrifugal force. So these are the main concepts which we have in this chapter. So maximum will try to cover each and every concept and even we discuss one or two numericals so that you know if you can watch this entire chapter definitely you will be able to do the all the questions which are asked based on this chapter. So children before going to enter into the topics let us see what actually force is. Children it is not a new word to all of us very very clear. Children what actually force is what force can do. Come on let us think one second children. So force means it is an external cause which can change the shape or a size or a direction even position of an object and we all know very well that it is a vector quantity. So force is a vector quantity. Now what are its SI and CGS units children? Children do you have idea about it? Come on think about it. What is the SI unit of force and what is the CGS unit of force? Just pause the video, comment your answer. Hope you have done. Yes, let us see. So children, the SI unit of force is Newton. Children's very important thing is that whenever you are writing the full name of the unit, first letter must be a small letter and symbol can be a capital because it is given after scientist. Now the CGS unit is, it is dyne. So the very important thing is that here, one Newton is equal to 10 power 5 dynes. Fine. Now children, other than this, we also have gravitational units of force, gravitational units. So what are the gra gravitational units of force children? We have kgf that is kilogram force, then we have gram force. Children, it's very very important. One kilogram force is equal to how many newtons? So here we have gravitational units of force units. So here the first one is kgf that is kilogram force. Children. 1 kilogram force is equal to how many newtons? So, which you have already learned in a ninth class. Let us think once again, children. 1 kg is equal to how many newtons? What you have to do? You have to pause the video and you have to comment your answer. Come on. What happened? Got it? 1 kg is equal to, okay, let me write. Just you can check. That is 9.8 newton. But each children, when we are solving the numericals, especially you know in the second chapter work power energy, we are going to use this relation like anything. There we can take it as approximately 10 newtons. Okay, fine. And we also have gram force. One gram force is equal to 980 times. 980 times. Okay, fine. So children, this is a minimum knowledge which we should have in order to understand the concept. So this is what actually force and the force units. Now children, let us see. Of course, already uh, we have learned the impacts of force. But children here, what happens when force acts on a body? Again, you make it one doubt. Sir, already we discussed again why are you taking all this? Yes. Let me tell you one important point. So before that children, we need to learn what actually rigid body, what actually non-rigid body. So children, it's very, very important. Non-rigid body. Are you able to see this? Let me check once again. Yes, it is seen clearly. Fine. Children, what is the non-rigid body? It's a very simple. Uh, let us take a case of a sponge. The body in which the distance between any two pair of particles is changed when we apply the force is called non-rigid body. So, in the case of non-rigid body children, what happens when force acts in a non-rigid body children? Its size as well as shape is changed. Very, very important children. Shape changed. Shape changed. It's very, very important. So, when force acts in a non-rigid body, what happens? Its shape and as well as size is changed. But the thing is that, it's important thing here. What happens when force acts in a rigid body? So, once again, I'm telling you, what is a rigid body? The body in which, for example, let me tell you, 
so let us take it is in our body body let us take two particles particle a particle b let us say the distance between these two particles is d the distance between d particle is d now let us say you are applying a force from all sides let us say from all side but still d remains constant still d remains constant not only for a and b you can take any two pair of particles children the distance remains same though we can apply the force such a body is called actually rigid body now we are going to see what happens when force acts on a rigid body children uh, if i am not wrong you know in exercise the first theory question is this only so based on this only we have first theory questions now let us see children so if you want to understand that you have to see you you, you know we must know whether that rigid body is free to move or is pivoted children what happens if this rigid body is for example it is free to move i mean it is not at all uh, pivoted then what happens so when a rigid body is free to move when you apply force what will happen children it will show translational motion it's very very important so when force is applied in rigid body which is free to move children so it will show translational motion translational motion translational motion very good then what happens when a rigid body is pivoted children when a rigid body is pivoted when a rigid body is pivoted what happens it will show rotational motion it will show rotational motion rotational motion so children let me show you for suppose children let us take it is a rigid body of course actually it is a non rigid body see shape is changed but let us assume that it is a rigid body so children now for suppose this rigid body is now pivoted look at here is a pivoted clear fine now when force acting on it then what is happening it is rotating children it is rotating about this axis about this axis so children it's very important and hope it's very clear once again let me tell you what happens when force acts on a body again we should think is it non rigid body or rigid body if it is a non rigid body children its shape and size is change then what happens if it is a rigid body then we have to see two cases with that rigid body is free to move or pivoted if a rigid body is free to move force is acting on it then will show translational motion whereas a rigid body is pivoted and force is acting then what will happen it will show rotational motion hope i am clear children just copy this then we'll discuss about turning effect of a force so now we discuss movement of a force that is a torque children examination point of view it's a very very important children for suppose uh, let us consider one rigid body children rigid body means it doesn't mean that it should have a you know perfect shape only you can take anything it's a regular rigid body or non regular non regular rigid body that is irregular rigid body okay no? fine and let us say it is pivoted so it is a rigid body and it's a pivoted at a point o now let us say at a point p let us consider any point p where force f is acting children force f is acting at a distance at a distance small r small r children so how the force is acting let me show you let us suppose body is like this force is not acting like this children no don't misunderstand here actually see as uh, it is a you know it's a 2d plane i can't show you the force like this so let, just i'll try to show you so this is a body is a pivoted so let us say here is a point where force is acting then what will happen children it will turn means there will be a turning effect produced this turning effect produced will be can call it as a moment of a force or a torque so here how to calculate moment of your force and on which factor does it depend is examination point which is very very important children here and one more thing we need to understand that the moment when force is applied what will happen it will be turning about this it will be let us say it is a x y so let us write here very very important here here f is called axis of rotation and then how can we calculate the moment of a force children so here moment of force will represent with a letter called tau it is what children it's a tau can you pronounce once again it's a tau not a tau it is it is a tau it is fine so tau means we use tau letter to represent actually torque so children here torque is equal to 
फोर्स इंटू पोपेंडिकुलर डिस्टें सो चिल बेस्ड आ दिस वी विल हेव अूमरिकल आलो एम ए क्लियर टव इज ईक्वल टू फोर्स इंटू पोपेंडिकुलर डिस्टें नव चिल लेट सी हियर वाट आर द यूनिट सो हियर एस ए यूनिट इज न्यूटन मीटर वेर एस सीजीएस यूनिट इज डाइन सेटर सीजीएस यूनिट इज डाइन सेटर सो द रिलेशन बिटवी हाउ एस ए यूनिट ऑफ टार्क इज रिलेटेड टू दि सीजीएस यूनिट इज वेरी इंपारटेंट एक्सामेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो हियर वन न्यूटन मीटर इज ईक्वल टू टेन पवर सेवन डाइन सेटर चलो इट्स वेरी 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 इंपारटेंट वन न्यूटन मीटर इज ईक्वल टू टेन पवर सेवन डाइन सेटर्स एज ए क्लियर फाइन नाउ we see on which factor does the moment of force depend so it's very very important so here torque or moment of force you can use anything so torque depends on torque depends on mainly two factor children torque depends on mainly two factors what is that actually perpendicular distance uh, perpendicular distance that is force but how does it depend children it's very very important look at here for suppose it is a let us suppose it is a rigid body children it is not a rigid body just we are assuming again don't get confused sir it is a sponge we all know very well it's a non rigid body how can you say that just it is a assumption only for sake of our understanding okay hope you are following my class that come on so it is a rigid body and the pivot let us say for example children first i apply let us say small force now see the turning effect if i apply a large force in which case more turning effect is there when we apply large amount of force that is more the more is the force more is the turning effect for a given a uh, perpendicular distance i mean to say less is the force less turning effect so which means what here moment of force depends on so that is torque or moment of force depends on force that is magnitude of force how children tau is proportional to the force it's very well means more is the force for a given perpendicular distance more is the force more is the turning effect less is the force less is the turning effect and children the second factor children the second factor for suppose look at here at this point if i apply force yes it is turning but whereas here near to this axis of rotation if i apply force it is not turning means then is very less which means what children for given force actually if more is a perpendicular distance more is the turning effect less is the perpendicular distance less is the turning effect so moment of force is also proportional to the perpendicular distance so here it's very clear that moment of force that is the torque depends on two factors magnitude of force and second is what children perpendicular distance hope it's clear just copy it will proceed now children let us it's very very important children so in exam one important question can be asked how can we change the direction of rotation of an object without changing the direction of force children it's very 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 important look at here so for suppose let us take a two circular discs two identical circular discs let us say here is two identical circular discs so both are pi over at point o here also pi over o now let us see children for suppose in this uh, first disc let us say this is point let us select this point a okay now. at this point a so force f is acting children then what will happen it will be rotated in which direction children in which direction it is rotated in clockwise direction means the force which will produce a moment in a clockwise direction that moment we can call it as a clockwise moment of force so this force children will produce moment in a clockwise direction that only we can call it as a clockwise moment of force children it's very very important clockwise moment of force children i am using here mof but you don't write mof you have to write clockwise moment of force children as per sign convention children clockwise moment of force is taken as a negative children this is very very important which very useful when you are solving the numericals but whereas children of course the same force here let us say this force is producing clockwise moment of force means this body is rotated in a clockwise direction but the point is that how can we change the direction of rotation without changing the force direction children we should not change the force direction but the rotation must be changed the rotation must be reversed how children it happens only when we change the point of application of force so 
instead of applying force here at a point A, let us apply point B at this point. So, here if same force, look at it children, are we changing the direction? No, we are not changing the direction of force, only we are changing the point of application of force. Then what happens children? It will produce movement in anti-clockwise direction. So, the resultant movement we can call it as a anti-clockwise anti clockwise movement of force so anti clockwise movement of force children it can be taken as positive anti clockwise movement of force we can take it as a positive and children the one more very very important thing is that movement of force is a vector quantity movement of force is a vector quantity then you may get a one doubt so as movement of force is a vector quantity then how can we find its direction so the direction of movement of force can be you know found with the help of right hand thumb rule right hand right hand thumb rule very very important right hand thumb rule so i'll show you i'll show you so for suppose children so this is a pivot point means what here axis of rotation will be like this children it's very important you need to understand here axis of rotation will be there like this fine so here right hand is there you know this four fingers of right hand you have to fold in the direction of rotation of a body so like this so i am folding in the direction of rotation of body and my thumb is showing outward but along the axis of rotation whereas here children these four fingers you can't see that sir i will fold oh my god like this no it's not that actually so put here right hand and fold your four fingers in the direction of rotation now thumb is showing inward which means what children when and it is an anti clockwise movement then the movement of force direction will be outward along the axis of rotation when it is rotated in a clockwise direction children then what will happen movement of force will be inward but along the axis of rotation only which means what movement of force always along the axis of rotation only it might be outward or it might be inward when it has anti clockwise then it will be outward when it is a clockwise direction it is inward children here clockwise movement is taken as a negative anti clockwise movement of force is taken as a positive this is a very 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 important examination point of view now children let us see one or two numericals one important numericals based on tau is equal to f into r so here for suppose children for suppose for example your question can be asked like this for suppose children it is let us say here is let us say some door so based on door also questions can be asked let us say based on door let us say this is hinge this is hinge here also hinge so they gave me a question like this so a force of force of 50 newton very very important children just note down it's very important a force of 50 newton is acting very very important is acting at hinges at hinges children very very at hinges then find the moment of force find the moment of force so here first numerical so what is given f is equal to 50 newton then you make it a one doubt sir tau is equal to it is force into perpendicular distance but where is the perpendicular distance where is the how much it is given is it given or not children is perpendicular distance is given or not open distance value come on think about it it is said that this force of 50 newton is acting at hinges at hinges means what children this is axis of rotation axis of rotation what will be the distance between hinge no axis of rotation passes through the hinge right then what open distance indirectly it is given zero so here tau is equal to 50 into zero so this will be zero which means what is children force alone cannot produce moment of force children it's very very important there must be some perpendicular descent so the force again i am telling you in a, some more case you know they may tell like this also if force is acting in this direction same 50 newton force acting in this direction no means what the force which is acting at any point on axis of rotation cannot produce moment of force this you have to note on very very important children can you note down the force if it is acting at any point in axis of rotation, then the moment of force produced will be zero. I mean what? There is no turning effect. Clear? Fine. Now, let us take one more question here. For suppose children, here is a rigid bar. A rigid bar 
it is a pivoted here let us say pivoted at this point at this point force of 20 newton is acting at a appropriate distance for example 100 centimeters 100 centimeters then find the moment of force come on children the force of 20 newton is acting at a perpendicular distance of 100 centimeters then find the moment of force come on so tau is equal to f into r and here it is 20 into should we substitute here 100 children no 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 we have to check the units because force is given in si system children here perpendicular distance 100 centimeters you have to convert into meters that is r is equal to 100 centimeters which is equal to 1 meter so it can be 1 so this is 20 newton meter children so this is how children again i'm telling you the concept is important so these kind of numericals okay but these kind of numericals you should be very very careful so there must be a some open distance force alone cannot produce torque hope i'm clear children just copy this now we discuss about examples of moment of a force so children we also can call the applications also so till now we have discussed the mathematical formulae okay now and we have discussed when it is a negative and when it is a positive children so before going to discuss examples of moment of force that is you know you can see even applications also let us recall once again tau is equal to f into r children understand this is very very important can we write like this f is equal to tau by r yes we can write f is equal to tau by r for a given children, it's very very important for a given for a given moment of a force for a given moment of force we can write force is inversely proportional to the open distance children this is a very important in order to understand all kind of applications which means what for a given moment of force children force is inversely proportional to perpendicular distance which means what less is the perpendicular distance more is the force required more is the perpendicular distance less is the force required children just uh, with the common sense you think so whenever we are doing any you know uh, things or any activities when we are performing just would like we would like to apply a more effort or less effort obviously less effort or because less effort will be a more comfort so again i'm telling you so we need to we want to apply less force for that we will try to keep perpendicular distance more so based on this only now we are going to have a discussion so children first example let us see here so here let us say spanner children spanner has long handle spanner is provided with a long handle what is the reason so look at here so here is spanner spanner is provided with a almost long handle children what is the purpose of spanner children it is used to tighten or a loosen nut okay this point pivoted this is a nut okay now so this is a point where we'll apply four children near the end only such as that this will be perpendicular distance which means what children if it has a long handle if it has a long handle what will happen perpendicular distance will be increased perpendicular distance will be increased so based on this relation children when perpendicular distance is what increase what happens the force required will be less which means what by applying less force only we can produce the enough moment of force clear fine children now second one let us take the case of door so let us take here is a door for suppose children here is a door so here is let us, single door let us take it's not double door single door fine no problem you can take the double door also simple door oh my god what's happening today it is going somewhere else yeah let us chill so this is hinges let us say it is hinges children if you can see the uh, what we can see your door children where that handle is provided children at the end of the door only this one at the end of the door only handle is provided why children at the end means what this perpendicular distance will be increased as perpendicular distance is increased you can open or close the door by applying less force only so what is the secret behind that children why are we arranging the handle at the end of the door only at the end of the door means what children from here so this is going to be a axis of rotation this is going to be a axis of rotation so here 
perpendicular distance will be increased whenever perpendicular distance will be increased children what will happen force required will be reduced force required will be reduced children not only that two cases even you know uh, do you have a idea about uh, what we can say hand floor grinder hand floor grinder so for hand floor grinder also children the handle is provided near the rim only why it is you know arranged near the rim only so as to increase the perpendicular distance then force required will be reduced and one more example children potters you might have noticed you know making of uh, you know pots especially in the villages children so there uh, you know potter uh, the particular man will be there you know so how it will be there potter's wheel will be there so they will be rotating that potter's wheel but if you can notice children here that stick will be placed near the rim of the wheel only so that what will happen perpendicular distance will be more open distance will be more so that by applying less effort only by life, uh, by applying less force only the person will rotate that potter's wheel am i clear children fine so these are the applications again i'm telling you you need to understand this relation children for a given turning effect for a given turning effect magnetic force is inversely proportional to the perpendicular distance which means what here more is a perpendicular distance less is a force required fine children now we discuss about couple so very 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 important couple and interesting and uh, in examination point of view also important so children whenever i keep this heading called couple in a classroom also i don't know why students will be laughing okay couple means i don't know what uh, they will think so so couple means uh, what will come to your mind come on thing come on children just can you type pause the video and just type couple means what will come to your mind for me couple means number 2 will come number 2 means here one important thing i want to tell you having two together can you say couple for example pair of chappal will be there one is a seven number another is a 10 number it's not a couple we can't say that means should be identical should be identical so whenever we get to you know any marriage of course this is what actually uh, general students will get to the mind when i say couple actually fine okay see it's not a, a, a nothing is wrong fine so Uh, what generally when we go to the marriage children by seeing that generally what do we say ah oh, what a beautiful couple made for each other which means what children as you are saying couple means so beautiful couple you are saying means what actually both should be like seems to be a beauty and handsome uh, should be matching you know the height the fairness might be behavior the attitude am i clear so then we can say it's a, a beautiful couple but in terms of physics hey in physics if it is asked a define about a couple don't write about marriage so that is not accepted fine so here couple means children here number 2 means we are going to talk about the two forces but what kind of two forces will produce couple is very important so let me tell you let me show you for suppose children here for suppose it is a, a object is a pivoted here one force 10 newton is acting here one force 20 newton is acting let us say so these two do not form couple why first of all couple means magnitude of force must be same it is a 10 newton is a 20 newton cannot form a couple okay let me tell you one more thing so here so let us take one more thing it is 10 newton and here is a 10 newton then you begin to wonder sir these two are having same magnitude still these two forces do not form couple which means what they should have a same magnitude and one more thing is that they should be parallel okay they are parallel only but they should be opposite but here they are in the same direction so these two also do not form couple now third one let us take one more example here is a rigid body it is a pivot point here force of 10 newton is acting here force of 10 newton is acting here you may get a wonder sir equal forces but in op opposite direction also still they do not form a couple so then you may get a wonder sir you please tell me what two forces will form a couple children very very important two forces should have a same magnitude fine they should be parallel fine they should be opposite fine and one more very very important they should not act along the same line of action of force what is the line of action of force still look at here here line of action of force is this here line of action of force is this it's very very important so let me just show you so here is 
let us say here is a 500 point here a force f is acting here a force f is acting very very well. now look at here children here i am represent with the f f which means what both equal in magnitude and both are parallel but opposite in direction and this line of action of force is this here line of action of force is this then these two for these two forces will form couple so it's very very important two equal anti parallel forces but not acting along the same line of action of force form couple now what is the result of couple children what will happen when this kind of uh, what a couple is acting children what is the net force net force is zero why both are equal and opposite net force is zero only but what happens what is the result of couple children so this force f which is acting upward direction will try to produce clockwise movement whereas this force also will try to produce clockwise movement. means in result what will happen rotation very important children rotation which means what as a result of couple in exam is very important as a result of couple body is rotated body has a rotation then examination point of view what are the examples of couple in our daily life children can you think children do you find any examples in your life where couple is acting so that there will be a rotation if so pause the video at least mention one example children come on think if you know any one example pause the video and just type the answer let us check once again okay fine let me tell you to open the bottle cap to close the bottle cap so with two fingers we will be applying the forces am i clear then cap what a uh, cap of the bottle will be rotated even tap also to open or to close a tap to open to close a tap also couple will be acting steering wheel with two hands hey you make it on that sir i have seen some person who is driving with a single hand it is not accepted officially we should not say that but we are talking in general in general we we uh, take help of two hands with the right hand this right hand will go forward this left hand will go backward so there also there will be a turning effect and even when we can go to any mechanic shop children there a kind of wrench will be there so to loosen the nuts or to tighten the nuts also to loosen nut to tighten the nuts what will happen with two hands to equal forces to be applied am i clear there also what will happen to equal and opposite forces acting but not acting along the same line of action of force so that there will be a rotation there will be a rotation so examination point of view what is a couple am i clear children and they may ask you examples also fine children now it's a very important thing children this distance between these two forces let us say d let us say this is very very important then how to find a moment so this couple is producing moment right so let us see how to find moment of couple so based on this also we will be having a one or two numericals okay children here first of all moment of couple is a vector quantity vector quantity so how to calculate moment of couple can be calculated either of force children either you can take this force or this force either of force so i can it's a either of force moment of couple is equal to either of force into this d is called what children here couple arm it's very important children here it is also it is called couple arm so let us recall once again when we were calculating moment of force we have taken the perpendicular distance between point of application of force to the pivot point only that is axis of rotation but here we are taking a couple arm d is called what children couple arm it's very important and let us see its si units si units are newton meter and cj's units are dime centimeter dime centimeters so this point and these units are similar to the moment of force that is a torque torque is a vector moment of couple is a vector for a torque also si unit newton meter cj unit dime centimeter for moment of couple also it is the same thing all am i clear just note on this now we discuss one very very important thing is what actually yeah copy children fine we discuss now equilibrium what is equilibrium what are types of equilibrium and examples children this equilibrium concept is not a new don't think that we are learning a new topic in a 10th class not at all we had learned in a 9th class 
Oh my God, sir, now we are in 10th class. 9th class, once upon a time. Yes, children, once upon a time, there was a 9th class. Come on, let us recall. So, there was even chapter called Last of Motion. There we discussed about Newton's first law of motion. Got it? Fine. So, this equilibrium concept, you know, it is just purely based on what actually? Newton's first law of motion. When you are discussing this equilibrium, definitely that Newton's first law of motion will be going around your mind actually. Clear? Fine. Now, we discuss what actually equilibrium equilibrium and what are the types of equilibrium and examples also examples for suppose children for suppose uh, let me tell you here here is an object it is placed here like this it is a placed means it is a, can we say it's a rest only of course it is at rest only now children for suppose on this body a force of 10 newton is acting then what will happen children obviously the body will be moved towards right side fine now simultaneously one more 10 newton force acting like this in this direction now what happens do you think that body can move no body won't move it's very clear okay for suppose here a force of uh, for example 40 newton is acting then what will happen children obviously body will go vertically upwards now at the same time 40 newton force acting vertically downward then what will happen can the body will can the body move no then what is this we know that right children whenever children what do we expect generally we expect that whenever some force are acting on your body we expect that body will move yes or no yes but children that is not a force net force we have to see net force we have to see very very important if you can see children for suppose let us say this is f1 let us say okay it is f2 this is f1 this is f3 and here is f4 children as per the sign convention as a force vector quantity so the f1 is acting towards right side so the net force i want to calculate net force so this is going to be or uh, 10 newtons only plus but this f2 force acting left side it is minus 10 plus this 40 newton f3 is acting vertical upwards toward positive y axis 40 plus and this 40 newton is acting towards the negative y axis it is minus 40 it's cancel 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 so here what net force is zero net force is zero so that no change there is no change in state of rest no change in state of rest very 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 important no change in state of rest which means what children several forces acting on a body do not change its state of rest let us take one more example children for suppose let us take a sun let us take sun around the sun children for suppose earth is rotating Mm -hmm. my god here is let us suppose mm, sun let us take here sun is here let us say earth is rotating anyhow in this session we will be discussing centripetal centrifugal force till now just uh, let us understand so here on this earth you know there are two forces will be acting one force towards the center one force is away from the center let us say f1 and is f2 is a very clear that f1 and f2 are equal in a magnitude but in the opposite direction centripetal force which will be acting towards the earth centrifugal force which is acting away from the earth for suppose children for suppose example not exactly this earth is revolving around the sun let us say with a hundred kilometer per second just example not exactly not exactly for suppose i am telling you means here our interest is, uh, should be on these fo two forces see children this force for suppose 50 newton Children, for suppose I am telling you not exactly, again don't get out what is this force are is saying the values. No, it's not that. So, this is also 50 Newton force children. Children, now here the earth is revolving around the sun. At the same time, these two forces are acting, but two are equal and opposite. Then what is the net force acting on this earth children? Zero. Means, though these two forces acting, do you think that there will be a, some disturbance in the motion of uh, earth actually? No, not at all. 
means several forces acting on a body do not change its state of motion here also net force is zero do not change its state of motion am i clear so here in these two cases if you can see children several forces acting on a body do not change either state of rest or state of motion then the body is said to be in equilibrium body is said to be in equilibrium clear fine now let us see there are two types of equilibrium so first one is hey here anyhow already we discussed this is called actually static equilibrium static equilibrium and this comes under dynamic equilibrium dynamic dynamic equilibrium dynamic static means what children static means rest static means rest dynamo means what actually it's a motion it's very very important so how to define a static equilibrium children how to define static equilibrium several forces acting on a body do not change its state of rest then body is said to be in static equilibrium children examples are very very important examples let us see some examples static equilibrium example children first one book lying on a table book lying on a table book lying on a table and the second one children beam so if you can see beam balance if you can see children beam balance so especially this beam when it is balanced when it is balanced so this beam of that balance will be in static equilibrium it's very important now children come to the dynamic equilibrium example yes earth revolving around the sun or moon revolving around the earth can be examples so the first example anyhow so earth revolving around the sun or moon revolving around the earth also moon revolving around the earth also second one children second one so what rain drop falling rain drop falling rain drop falling with uniform speed uniform speed is a best example children is a best example and the third one here even aeroplane flying at a constant height so it's very very important examination point of view examples are very very important so it is what actually equilibrium and types of equilibrium just copy it now we discuss the most 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 wanted principle of moments yeah now we discuss principle of moments children if a several forces acting on a body and a body is a pivoted generally what do we expect children we expect that there will be some rotation means some forces if for suppose if some forces are producing the clockwise moments and some other forces are producing anti clockwise moments then what happens see if all forces together they are producing either clockwise or anti clockwise there will be rotation if not what will happen look at it children for suppose children here it is a rigid body is a pivotal let us say at this point o such a that a force f1 is acting at this perpendicular distance r1 children what will be the nature of this f1 this f1 force will try to produce some moment in anti clockwise direction am i right yes if another force let us say for suppose if f2 is acting at a perpendicular distance at r2 and this f2 will try to produce clockwise moment of force clockwise moment clockwise moment now in equilibrium children what happens if you can find a clockwise moments that are anti clockwise moments if both are equal i mean what if the algebraic sum of the clockwise moments and anti clockwise moments is what we can say is zero then that body is in equilibrium which means what children so principle of moments states that in equilibrium in equilibrium it's very important in equilibrium in equilibrium so the sum of anti clockwise moments of force are always equal to the sum of clockwise moments of force children here we have taken f and f2 let it be here one more f3 force acting f3 into that perpendicular distance f4 into that perpendicular distance you can take any n number of force acting children let us calculate the moments okay in equilibrium the sum of all anti clockwise moments of forces are always equal to the the sum of all clockwise moments of forces or the algebraic sum of all moments of forces are zero only is zero only am i clear this is what actually 
principle of moments now children based on this how the numerical can be asked children so very very important hope it is copied fine now let us do one numerical children let us do one numerical so for suppose a uniform meter rule is a pivoted at a 60 centimeter mark and in order to balance it a 20 gram force is suspended at one of its ends then they will ask us to draw the diagram required and they also will ask us to find the weight of the meter rule that is the weight of the uniform meter children diagram is very important so as per the question children it is uniform meter rule let us it's a uniform meter children uniform meter rule means no need to draw exactly one meter uh, what we call the length of the diagram it's not required okay fine so but as it is given meter rule so meter means it's a zero hundred centimeters fine children 100 centimeters it is said that it is a pivoted at 60 centimeter mark 60 centimeter mark now they are saying what they said that suspend 20 gram force at, at any one end they are saying it is our choice students this is a very very important one which we need to discuss but children, it's a minimum common sense. Let us think, should we suspend left side or right side? Now you can think children. So it's a minimum common sense. So here length is more, here length is less. Obviously this weight is more. So it will try to tilt in this direction. It will try to tilt in this direction. To balance it, here we must put a weight. Clear? Fine. So this is a point, this is the end where this 20 gram force should be suspended. Should be suspended. Now, children, this perpendicular distance is how much? 100 minus 60. This is going to be 40 centimeter. Children, as it is mentioned, uniform meter rule. Where the total weight of the meter rule will act? Exactly at its center of gravity. <coughs> where it will be? Of course, anyhow, we will be discussing center of gravity, not to worry. So, at this midpoint, 50 centimeter mark. This is a point where the total weight of the meter rule will act. At what distance? 60 minus 50, 10 centimeter, 10 centimeters. Now children, this to be calculated. So here let us say it's a W1 is W, R1 is 10 centimeters and W2 is 20 gram force. Then R2 will be 40 centimeters. Children, come on, pause the video, do it. What is the answer? What is the W? What is the weight of the meter rule? Come on, try it, children. Children, just pause the video. Try it, children. It might be right answer, wrong answer. It is not a matter. But trying is a matter. It's very important. Unless and until you try, children, you won't get a grip. Just watching, just reading, you won't get it. Just try to put your pen on a paper and have some practice. Whether you are going to get right answer, wrong answer. It's afterwards. Anyhow, here I will tell you the right answer. Not to worry. Come on. Got it? Comment your answer. Let us see here. Children, here very important. You should write here like this. According to principle of according to principle of moments of weights. Principle of moments of weights. So we can write here W1 into R1 is equal to W2 into R2. This is W into 10 is equal to 20 into 40. 0, 0 cancel. So, W is equal to how much it is? 80 gram force. That's it. 80 gram force. So, children, this is how we can calculate the numericals based on principle of moments. Very easy, children. See, if they want to make a bit complicated, what they'll do? They'll give more number of forces, but no need to worry. Just calculate the clockwise movements anti clock moments just equate both then definitely you will get the value what they are expecting us to do it okay just copy it now we discuss center of gravity very easy topic children if you can concentrate really you can score the marks very easily so it is center of gravity center of gravity <clears throat> center of gravity so children here 
uh, according to the newton's universal law of gravitation children if you can take any two particles two objects two substances anywhere in this universe so there will be a always force of attraction this we have learned in a ninth class again we are learning in a ninth class again children so children and we all know very well that for example children here is a cap is there if this cap is thrown vertical upwards then what will happen again it is coming back to the earth only what is the reason because of force of attraction means earth will attract each and every object towards its center so due to that only every object on earth surface has some weight so children what is weight children weight is nothing but the the force with which an object is being pulled by the earth i am clear fine so means for suppose let us take here is one particle let us say its mass is m obviously its weight it has some weight w is equal to mg but children don't forget that the weight will act vertically downwards only very very important so weight of an object always acts vertically downwards so it's a particle now let us apply this concept to a what we can say one uh, body where n number of particles are there so for some, children again i'm telling you you may take a regular body or you may take irregular it's not a matter to it but for sake of our convenience i'm going to take a simple object let us say it's kind of a rectangular object rectangular rectangular body let us take okay what is happening today so rectangular body children here n number of particles will be there n number of particles are there but children let me consider particle p particle q particle r particle s particle s so there are four particles children obviously four particles will have mass obviously it has a mass let us say m1 m2 m3 m4 they may have a different mass it is not that every particle should have a same mass it has different mass and we all know very well that on each and every particle there will be force of gravity that is called weight will be acting downward direction so let us say the weight here acting is w1 here the weight acting is w2 here the weight acting is w3 here the weight acting is w4 chill if you can notice all these weights that is the forces are acting vertical downwards and they are parallel to each other now thing is that can we replace all these forces with a single force which should represent all forces children is it possible you may you may get wondered sir how it is possible for example you know uh, one person having 10 rupees notes 10 10 rupees notes 10 so let us take a 10 rupees note this 10 10 rupees notes and let us give to this person 100 rupees note will there be any difference will there be any difference obviously sir no difference sir. nothing happened but why to do it okay that leave it it's not okay na so so replacing 10 rupees notes 10 with 100 rupees note nothing makes different but here okay let us say let us replace this all these four weights with a single force See, weight is nothing but the force on chill. All these four forces, okay, let us represent with a one single force only. But the question is that where that single force should act, where that single force should act is very very important. So, children, so that total, what we can say, that force will act at a point such a way that the algebraic sum of these moments of weights must be a zero. that point only we can call it as a that point we can call it as a center of gravity will represent the g center of gravity will represent the g for suppose children this w1 is acting in a distance of x1 whereas w2 is act, acting in a distance of x2 w3 is acting at a distance of x3 and w4 is acting in a distance of x4 it's very very important x4 children such a way that children here W1 into x1 plus W2 into x2 equal to the W3 into x3 plus W4 into x4. Very, very, very important. Which means what? The anti-clockwise moments of weights, the sum of the algebraic sum of anti-clockwise moments of weights must be equal to the the algebraic sum of the clockwise moments of weights. 
where about this point then that point only we can call it as a center of gravity so it's a very very important to understand the definition what is the center of gravity what is the center of gravity the point about to which the algebraic sum of the moments of weights the algebraic sum of the moments of weights of all the particles constituting the body is zero about this point children algebraic sum of anti clockwise moments of weights must be equal to the clockwise moments of weights so that point means this is a point where the total weight of the body will act at the center of gravity only children we assume we will assume that the total weight of the body will act that point only we can call it as a center of gravity and here you may get one one question sir is it compulsory that center of gravity should be exactly at midpoint for example in a regular body for this regular body as mass is distributed uniformly yes center of gravity is situated at midpoint only then you may get one doubt so hope it is copied yes fine if the body is not regular then where it might be there where it might be? for example children let us take one body like this one body like this don't ask me i don't know what is the shape of it's a very regular body so chill let us say here it is 100 cm let us say it's a 1 meter length now can you say that exactly at a 50 cm at cm at 50 cm mark a center god will be there i mean to say can you balance this body by keeping pivot point 50 cm obviously no children can you guess whether the center god will be situated right side or left side come on come on come on think think where uh, the center of gravity might be situated for this body right side of 50 cm or left side of centimeters just pause the video comment your answer and you also should tell why if it is the right side means why right side left side means why right side sorry left side got it children come on think come on can i tell come on look at it obvious children somewhere else here the center of gravity will be situated somewhere else means right side of 50 cm only why right side of 50 cm only because here more mass is distributed so children it's a very here we can learn one important point center of gravity is always shifted towards a point where more mass is distributed am i clear children come on make a note of it center of gravity is shifted always towards a point where more mass is distributed is it clear fine now children let us see on which factors does the center of gravity depend so before the children can center of gravity be situated outside of its material is very very important children what do you think can center of gravity be situated outside of its material yes or no comment your answer what do you think can the center of gravity be situated look at here children for suppose let us take a ring children let us take a ring let us take a ring so here is here is ring so for this ring children where the center of gravity is situated how to find make a diag oh, sorry make a diameters the point where the diameters is uh, intersecting there center of gravity will be situated now for this ring children is the center of gravity situated outside of its material or inside so children don't think in terms of english language inside means being inside outside it's not that actually children here this is a point where center of gravity is shifted but do you think here some mass will be there or hello hello so the point where the center of gravity is situated if there is no mass distributed then it is said to be having outside only so very 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 important it's very very important means what the best example is ring only center of gravity can be situated outside of its material example ring even you can take halo sphere exactly at its geometric center center of gravity will be there but it is geometric center that is a halo sphere children do you think there is a mass distributed no so for halo sphere center of gravity is situated outside its material then you may get one doubt sir what about solid sphere sir yes for a solid sphere inside mass is distributed so it is said to be having inside only within the body with the material so the important point to be noted here is what is that children center of gravity can be situated within the material or outside of the material also if it is outside of the material what is the best example the best example is center of gravity of a ring only is that clear fine now we will see on which factors does a center of gravity depends children so here very 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 important examination point of here center of gravity 
depends center of gravity depends first of all shape of an object children center of gravity depends on shape of an object shape of an object how look at here for suppose children let us take a thin wire let us take a thin wire let us take a it is a thin wire you may get one doubt actually sir you are saying thin wire but you are drawing thick wire of course i don't have option children because if i'll make a thin wire you may not see that just again there is assumption let us assume there is a thin wire only so children uh, wire is more or less like a you know cylindrical in shape yes or no yes cylindrical in shape thin means uh, what we can wire means what inside completely material will be there it's a solid only so for this thin wire children fine children so for this thin wire center of gravity will be situated within the material now children can we make this thin wire in the form of ring let us assume come on thin wire come on make it yeah, come on come on bahubali come on come on yes we can make in the form of a ring for suppose children this wire is made in the form of a ring let us say in the form of a ring so children if you can see before the center of gravity is here somewhere is here now for this ring where the center of gravity will be situated here children here here very 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 important means before it is within the material now it is outside of its material what could be the reason shape so when shape is changed center of gravity is shifted it's very very important so whenever you can change the shape children for example the mass of this thin wire is 50 kg obviously the mass of this ring also 50 kg we are not changing mass but only we are changing the shape whenever we can change the shape children center of gravity will be shifted the best example this one is it clear fine and the second one children it also depends on mass distribution mass distribution mass distribution mass distribution children for suppose children and one more thing children if two bodies are there which are same in shape can you see that center of gravity will be situated at the same point come on think come on think both are having same shape can you say that center of gravity is shifted at the same point only no children it's very very important for suppose let me tell you here so let us take here is halo cone and let us take here this solid cone children it is halo cone halo cone and here is solid cone it is it is solid cone children here let us see both are same height both height is same is it identical actually generally what some students will think when there are two bodies will have same shape so they will think that yes center of gravity should be at the same height they will think no it's wrong children so for halo for a halo cone the center of gravity will be situ situated at h by 3 height whereas for a solid cone the center of gravity will be situated at h by 4 height means in which case center of gravity is situated at a lower height children for a solid cone why because in the case of solid children inside also mass is distributed whereas here for a halo cone mass is distributed only on the surface so here center of gravity also depends on mass distribution am i clear so center of gravity depends on shape of an object and center of gravity also depends on mass distribution am i clear fine now on screen i'll try to show you uh, center of gravity for some shapes examination point of view it's a very very important kindly note down fine children now we'll see how to find the center of gravity of a irregular body children irregular body means for example if a square lamina will be given how to find the center of gravity by drawing the diagonals the point of intersection of diagonals will be the center of gravity the how to find the uh, center of gravity of a uh, triangular lamina by drawing the median so the point of intersection of medians will be the center of gravity but whereas for irregular body children for suppose here for example so finding the center of gravity of irregular object it is ill irregular for example children look at here so let us say so this is irregular object now for this irregular object children can you see that center of gravity will be situated exactly at midpoint no we can't say that 
so for this only children we are going to use plumb line concept very important it is a plumb line concept so children have you seen this plumb line so generally plumb line is used by you know uh, persons who are constructing uh, houses you know to check whether the wall is uh, vertically straight or not actually plumb line so it seems to be like this here one thread will be there mm, not at all getting straight yeah here is uh, thread will be there at the end of this thread you know uh, what we can say metallic bob <laughs> it's not a mango so metallic bob will be there so that the thread will be straight actually so this we are going to use to find the center of gravity of a regular body now for suppose children so what we have to do look at here so you can randomly you can make some holes let us say it's a hole a it is hole b it is hole c somewhere it's a hole d it's up to you hole d now let us take one retard stand children let us take here is a retard stand okay here is a retard stand is taken so here here is a retard stand now let us suspend this irregular body through this plumb line so means what it is plumb line so it may come like this. so children initially what i mean to say is that the moment when you suspend it it won't be rest so both will be oscillating like this yes sir no so both will be oscillating but after some time after some time what will happen both will come to the rest so the irregular body will come to the rest obviously this plumb line will rest on this irregular body now draw a line along this plumb line so definitely we get a one line draw a line now what do i do repeat this with the point b point c point d so we will get all lines for example when you suspend from a point b so you may get like this okay now point d for example point c you may get like this point d you may get like this so this is a point where all these plumb lines are intersecting will be the center of gravity of irregular body is a clear chilling fine so this is how we can calculate the center of gravity of a irregular body just copy it yeah children so now before going to discuss about the last concept in this chapter first let us see a few words children let us just children let us of course we all know very well what is a motion children when you can say that body is in motion when a body is changing its position with respect to the surroundings then body is said to be in motion okay fine so now you tell me what is a linear motion when you can say that body is in linear motion it's very very important children when you can say body is in linear motion children if a body is going along a straight line path then it is said to be in linear motion it is said to be has linear motion now children here our point our important point is that actually we need to discuss what is uniform linear motion children examination point of view this is important what is uniform linear motion what is uni uniform linear motion look at it children let me give one example so let us let us take a straight line path such that it is a point a point b and it is a point c it's a point d for suppose a to b is 10 meters b to c is 10 meters c to d also 10 meters still end now one object is going such a that to cover a to b it is taking one second time b to c it is taking one second time c to d also it is taking one second time then we can say that body has uniform motion that is uniform linear motion now children in this case what is the speed of the body speed of the body is 10 meter per second what can you say about velocity children even velocity also 10 meter per second now my question is that is there any change is there any change in the velocity of the body obviously no why because it is going along a straight line path so there is no point in no, there is no point to say that there is a change in velocity so magnitude and velocity uh, direction remain same so when a body is going in a uniform linear motion then speed and velocity both remain same very 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 important both remain same i mean 
speed and velocity both remains constant children as there is no change in velocity will there be any acceleration children what is acceleration the rate of change of velocity whenever there is a change in velocity there will be acceleration but here velocity remains same so children here acceleration is zero so children as acceleration is zero this uniform linear motion is also called as unaccelerated motion very 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 important and so if a body is covering equal displacements in equal interval of time means then if it is going along a straight line path then it is said to be has uniform linear motion in a uniform linear motion speed velocity both remain same acceleration is zero and uniform linear motion is also called as unaccelerated motion now children what is a circular motion what is circular motion circular motion so here the path along which the body is moving is different i mean what if any object is going along a circular path children if any object is going along a circular path then it is said to be in circular motion in circular motion so let us take a one example here let us take a one circular path here okay here is circular path so children here it is point a point b point c is point d for suppose a to b the distance is 10 meters b to c 10 meters c to d 10 meters d to a also 10 meters so the body is in circular motion such a way that children to move a to b b to c c to d d to a it is taking same time that is one second only it is taking one second one second one second which means what it is covering equal distances in equal interval of time along the circular path and children is there any change in the speed children no speed is how much speed is 10 meter per second and it is constant it is constant so the body is going along a circular path such a way that its speed remains same then such circular motion is called uniform circular motion uniform circular motion children here this also what kind of circular motion it is horizontal children horizontal circular motion only uniform again we'll be having vertical circular motion like this vertical circular motion is not a uniform children. vertical circular motion is the example for non-uniform this you will be learning in detail in 11th class so here whatever we are discussing it is uniform that is uniform horizontal circular motion horizontal circular motion only can be a uniform am i clear children so in a uniform circular motion speed remains same then you make it one doubt sir what about velocity of course the velocity also 10 meter per second only i am talking about a magnitude but children don't you think that velocity is a vector quantity so even we need to discuss about its direction also so the direction of velocity will be always along the tangent draw which means what at this point a the direction of velocity will be in this way here the direction of velocity will be here here the direction of velocity will be here here the direction of velocity will be here which means what children here the magnitude of velocity throughout the journey might be same but what about its direction the direction of velocity keeps on changing which means what here velocity is not a constant though velocity value magnitude is same but it is a variable it is variable so it's very very important so in a uniform circular motion speed remains same speed is a constant but velocity is a variable as there is a change in the velocity children there will be acceleration i mean what here acceleration is not zero so the body which is in uniform circular motion has some acceleration that's what this uniform circular motion is also called as accelerated motion accelerated motion accelerated motion accelerated motion and one more thing children here acceleration also not same acceleration direction also will be changing continuously so of course that we will discuss along with the centripetal force concept actually so here in exam they may ask you a question is the acceleration of your body in a uniform circular motion constant means you can say that no it will be changing children examination point of view they may ask you to compare uniform linear motion with a uniform circular motion and examination point of view this diagram is a very very important is it clear children just copy it now we discuss what is centripetal force what is a centrifugal force 
so now we discuss centripetal force children for suppose here one particle is going in a straight line path so as long as there is no force acting on a body it will go along a straight line path only but what if if a, what if a force will act perpendicular to its motion then do you think that still it will go along a straight line path no so it will change its direction like this again here a force is acting still it will change its again it will change its direction again force is acting perpendicular to its motion means children like this if a force constant force is acting continuously perpendicular to its motion children then what will happen its direction keeps on changing its direction keeps on changing very 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 important very 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 important so now all the, look at here all this. so what is happening if a body is going along the straight line path children what happens if a constant force will act continuously perpendicular to its motion then its path is changed and if it is acting continuously children continuously what will happen the body will go in a circular path the body will go in a circular path so it's a very important thing is that to keep a body in a circular path what is that force which is required in centripetal force so it's very 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 important so in exam they may ask this question name the force which is required to keep a body in a circular path is what children centripetal force and what is the direction of centripetal force if you can see centripetal force line of action if you can draw always towards the center always towards the center only means centripetal force will always act towards the center that's what centripetal force is also called as center seeking force it is also called as center seeking force very 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 important center seeking force very important and its direction is always towards the always towards center always towards center and it is a real force children why we are saying it is a real force because there will be some external cause for this external source will be there to provide a centripetal force so children what is centripetal force the force which is acting towards the center of circular path is called centripetal force it is also called a center seeking force it is always directed towards the center okay and uh, it is a real force children you know just uh, before we discuss about acceleration i said that acceleration direction will be changing continuously but on what base we can say actually of course in detail in 11th class we will learn but let me tell you children the direction of acceleration is always towards the direction of force that we know very well so here the direction of force will be here 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 means as the direction of force is changing continuously acceleration direction also changes am i clear fine now let us see a few examples let us see a few examples where we can uh, see centripetal force so the first point let us take you know sun planet system let us take it's a sun planet system so let us take here is a sun and here is here is a planet let us say so here this is what actually centripetal force but children here what is that force providing centripetal force here force of gravity children here force of gravity between planet and sun will provide the center means required centripetal force required centripetal force let us take a second example nucleus nucleus electron system so children here is a nucleus around the nucleus electron will be revolving so here also as electron is revolving in a circular path means what children there will be a centripetal force but here who is providing that centripetal force children here the electrostatic force the electrostatic force between nucleus and electron is providing required centripetal force now children let us take one more example let us take a string and stone string and stone you know generally uh, gen children will be playing children did you play this so generally of course when you know i was studying you know in a school when i was going yeah, i used to play much means what when a stone is tied at one uh, end of one end of a string another end just we have to hold and we go on whirling it like this so so that it will be in a horizontal motion which means what here the stone is going in a circular path which means what as a stone is going in a circular path children, there will be a centripetal force so let us say here is some stone 
so it is going in a circular path is going in a circular path means there must be some centripetal force there must be a, some central force that is what here force of tension force of tension will provide centripetal force is that clear children fine but here there will be one question for us all of us hope you covered this okay fine and there will be a common question here yes what is that let us take this for suppose so let us here is sun children let us make here is uh, earth let us take here so we know that there will be a centripetal force acting continuously continuously let us say f1 is acting but children if only centripetal force acting on earth continuously what would happen obviously slowly 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 the earth should go towards the sun and should hit with sun is it happening no it is not happening which means what there will be one more force which is acting which is balancing the centripetal force but which is acting away from the center very 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 important very 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 important let us say f2 this f2 force only we can call it as a centrifugal force very very important centrifugal force children centrifugal force centrifugal force now here thing is the children i'll tell you one thing i'll give you three options you should tell which of the following option is right children okay now look at here first option f1 is greater than f2 second option f1 is less than f2 third option f1 is equal to f2 fourth option f1 is equal to minus f2 f1 is equal to minus so out of these four options children which option is right and why come on pause the video pause the video and comment your answer children so after these four options f1 is greater than f2 f1 is less than f2 f1 is equal to f2 f1 is equal to minus f2 let us check which option is correct children if f1 is greater than f2 what would happen the earth should come towards the sun is it happen no it is not happen it is wrong second one f1 is less than f2 which means what f2 is greater than f1 which means what earth should go away from the sun is it happening no it is also wrong ah f1 is equal to f2 this might be right this might be right and f1 is equal to minus f2 so if we can talk strictly fourth one is right but if we can talk about magnitudes only magnitude but not a direction this also can be right but including directions if we can talk only this third one is right which means what children here centripetal force and centrifugal force both are equal in magnitude both are equal in magnitude but opposite direction opposite direction so centrifugal force which acts away from the center away away from center which will act from away from center and it is not a real force it is not a real force very very important it is not a real force in exam they may ask a question what is the ratio of magnitudes of centripetal force and centrifugal force children what could be the answer come on can you guess i repeat once again what is the ratio of magnitudes of centripetal and centrifugal force just pause the video and type your answer what is that i repeat once again you want me to repeat yes what is the ratio of magnitudes of centripetal and centrifugal forces children it is 1 is to 1 because they are equal in magnitude i said they are equal in magnitude that's why now the last important question children can centripetal and centrifugal forces form action reaction pair children it's very 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 important so let us recall once again children newton's third law of motion action is equal to minus reaction action is equal to minus reaction now we also can write here centripetal force centripetal force centripetal force is equal to minus centrifugal force centrifugal force children look at here now let us compare so action is equal to minus reaction we know that 
and here centripetal force is equal to minus centrifugal force minus centrifugal force now what is my question children what is my question here can centripetal force and centrifugal force form action reaction pair yes or no come on once again pause the video comment your answer what do you think what do you think can centripetal and set come on think children it's very very important just think pause the video it's very important children just pause the video and think can centripetal and centrifugal forces form action reaction pair come on think think three two one look at here if you want to understand that let us take one example children so here is earth surface here there is a table your book is there children so here book weight will act on the table downwards and table so this will act on table children very very important and in reaction what will happen normal force normal force where this normal force will act on book children try to understand so here weight is a action normal force is a reaction try to understand but weight is acting on table normal force acting on book which means what action reaction two forces might be equal and opposite but both will act on two different bodies i repeat once again action reaction forces both will act on two different bodies but whereas come here centripetal force acting on earth only centrifugal forces acting on earth only so which means what children centripetal and centrifugal forces they do not form action reaction pair what is the reason action reaction should act on two different bodies but whereas centripetal and centrifugal forces will act on same body hence they do not form action reaction pair so children these are the concepts of force hope almost it is like a 1 hour 1 1 hour 20 minutes so maximum we try to cover almost all important concept in a shortcut we have covered if you want in detail explanation of this force chapter children in a description i will give you links where each and every topic is discussed in detail and children numericals based on force chapter is very very important so definitely in a couple of days i'll try to uh, upload video where all you know numericals i'll try to uh, explain and even some students are you know they are just uh, sending a message by saying that sir please discuss even exercise questions or the theory questions so really it's a good idea children so first uh, i'll try to upload a numericals then exercise 1a like you know exercise 1b 1c even i'll try to discuss the theory questions also children i'm damn sure that if you will be with our channel definitely it is very very useful to you for your uh, you know exam preparation and one more thing children i'm not saying only watch videos only children it's not that first always i'll tell you textbook is very very important kindly read the textbook so these videos children see again i'm telling you you may watch this video or uh, you may find a different different videos better best videos see i'm not saying that you must watch our video only whatever it may be children first textbook is very very important kindly go through the textbook try to you know make your own notes it's very very important you should have your own own notes for a revision purpose you can prefer these videos so that it will be very very helpful to you so when you are preparing any you know when you are preparing when you are going the textbook children if you will get any doubts no need to hesitate come to our channel and just type your doubt in a comment box definitely i'll try to answer all your questions okay children thank you so much all the very best